In the last session, I explained that God called Moses to save the Israelite, showed him the evidences of being with him, and sent him to Egypt. Now, Moses had to go before Pharaoh and convey God's command of setting them free and allowing them to serve him, and he had to bring them out of Egypt. From a physical perspective, this was impossible. It was very unlikely that Pharaoh would listen to Moses' words. Moreover, Moses was of the Hebrews, the people of Israel, who were enslaved in Egypt. He committed a sin and ran away from Egypt. He was a mere shepherd, tending his flock. There was no way Pharaoh would listen to him. Back then, by by enslaving the Israelites, Egypt was enjoying many benefits, setting up huge structures and farming without labor costs. Even Even on Moses' demand, Pharaoh had no reason to give up his rule over the people, let alone the benefits from their hard labor. Requesting Pharaoh to give up the Israelites would be considered insane or rude. So it was unlike uh, it was uh, it was likely that Moses would be killed. But God gave Moses this promise so that he could boldly go before Pharaoh. Certainly, I will be with you. Namely, God assured him that he would be with him, guarantee his words, and let him manifest his power. In doing so, God intended to certify that what Moses commanded were not Moses' own words, but it came from him, the Lord of hosts. For Moses, who was concerned about his lack of elegance, God thoughtfully set up his elegant brother Aaron as his prophet. Relying on God's promise, Moses departed for Egypt. Subsequently, he performed many works of power, finally bringing the Israelites out of Egypt. Today, we'll go over the works of power Moses performed and delve into their spiritual meanings. I pray in our Lord's name that this message will help you put trust in the Almighty God and fully accomplish Father God's providence through confessions and deeds of faith. The main point of today's message is the ten plagues. Through the plagues, he demonstrated that he was living and his power. So the Egyptians were afraid. So the Israelites could leave Egypt in peace. So don't be misconceived that Father God is a fearful God. I'm not saying this. He sends the disasters. Also, He's the one who takes away the disasters. And He's also the one who protects us from disasters. You know, everything belongs to God and everything is by His power. If you acknowledge this fact, if you rely on this God, you, it's, it's better to live by His will. If we, you have weak faith, we believe in God because we are afraid. But as our faith grows and as we love Him, Even if we face disasters, we know that it all came from His love. So through today's today's message, you can feel, understand such love of God. And you also realize that such God is your Father, so that you can run towards Him all the more. Arriving in Egypt, Moses met the elders of Israel and notified them that God heard their cry, and that He was sent to save them from their afflictions. He showed them various signs as the evidences. Who would have believed Him merely through His words? That's why He demonstrated the evidences of God being with Him. As the the Israelites heard Moses' words and witnessed the signs, they thanked God for considering them and worshipped them. They were excited about leaving Egypt and heading for the new place. However, things didn't go smoothly as they expected. As Moses and Aaron went before Pharaoh, conveyed God's command, and demanded that he set the Israelites free, Pharaoh rejected it, just as they were worried. Pharaoh said, 
Who is the Lord that I should obey His voice to let Israel go? I do not know the Lord, and besides, I will not Israel go. Saying this, He imposed le- harder labor on them. The Bible says, So the same day Pharaoh commanded the taskmasters over the people and their foremen, saying, You are no longer to give the people straw to make brick as previously. Let them go and gather straw for themselves. But the quota of bricks which they were making previously, you know, they needed straw to make bricks. And they told them not to give them, provide them with straw and pick them up, pick them up for themselves. He said, You shall impose on them. You are not to reduce any of it because they are lazy. Therefore, they cry out, Let us go and sacrifice to our God. Let the labor be heavier on the men and let them work at it so that they will pay uh, pay no attention to false words. You know, they told Pharaoh that they would go and serve God. So Pharaoh thought that they were the labor was easier for them because they provided the straw for bricks so that's why the Pharaoh decided to um, impose harsh labor on them so that they couldn't think about anything else as a result the Israelites faced harsh labor and they got beaten for not satisfying the quota Because they heard that God considered them, they expected Pharaoh to liberate them right away. But as they faced severe hardships, they were deeply disappointed. Even though Moses talked about God's promise, as they faced harsh reality, they didn't believe Him. Rather, they complained that they suffered even more because of Him. You know, Throughout Mammon's history, there have been many cases where people heard of God's covenants and rejoiced, expecting that they would happen right away, but they began to complain when things didn't go as expected, and they, and they, they ended up losing their faith. You have to, in your individual life of faith, you have to check your life of faith, whether you change your heart. You know, when you are a novice believer, you could change your mind. But even after witnessing many signs and wonders, you expect God to work in the way you please. But, and if He doesn't, you get disappointed. That's like the Israelites who complained against Moses. So, we were not qualified for God's answer. We have to apply this message to ourselves. Brothers and sisters, the Bible says, God is not a man that He should lie, nor a son of man that He should repent. Has He said, and will He not do it? Or has He spoken, and will will He not make it good? If we have faith, we can just believe in His promise. We shouldn't think about people's words or our environment or circumstance. We can just hold on to His word. If He says He's given us, we can just believe and act with faith. Then the way will be open when the proper time comes. Even though the situation seems miserable now, God says we are prosperous because He is with us. He says like, even though your situation seems miserable, you are being prosperous because there is my will and providence. It will turn out to be prosperity. Once God has something, once God says something, He will surely do it. He never changes His heart and has no craftiness like man. Once He decides to do something, no one can stop Him ever. If we obey with faith and show these, it will be fulfilled for sure. Because the Israelites heard of God's promise and witnessed the evidences of manifested through Moses, they should have kept their faith no matter what. But, even though they faced harsh raver right now, even though the situation didn't go as they expected, because Father God set up Moses as their leader, and Father, they heard of God's promise of leading them out of Egypt, And because they saw 
extraordinary works, they should have believed it, and they should have believed Moses, but they failed to do so. While they expected the promises to be fulfilled immediately, they faced harsh reality. Disappointed, they distrusted Moses whom they had believed to be their leader. This indicates what their faith was like at the time. They had little knowledge about God. All they knew about God was that He appeared to their forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and that He would save them from Egypt and lead them into Canaan. If compared to today's believers, they were merely novice believers who just started attending church. You know, God, at that point, they were like novice believers spiritually. Knowing their level of faith, God didn't blame them. He began to manifest His words through Moses. They were the well-known, famous, Ten plagues. Until Pharaoh obeyed God's command and let the Israelites go, God inflicted the ten plagues upon his entire nation, one by one. It started with very minor ones. As he refused to repent after suffering minor plagues, the plagues intensified and finally led to losses of death. losses of life. I hope that you won't consider this message just their story of Exodus, but think that it all relates to you. This message doesn't just apply it just doesn't apply during the Exodus, but until the time but it applies until the time God's redeeming work, the, the human cultivation is over. The first plague was the plague of blood. As Moses struck the water with his staff, all the water in the Nile turned into blood. The fish in it died, and the stench from the water permeated throughout the nation. The Egyptians urgently had to dig wells wells to get drinkable water. After Moses brought down that plague, the Egyptian magicians did the same. From the fact that the magicians also turned water into blood, you shouldn't be conceived that the enemy devil can perform power. Power belongs to God alone. Then, how could the magicians and sorcerers turn the staff into serpents, turn the water into blood, and make frogs come up? Which was the second plague. You know, in the ancient societies were magicians and sorcerers that worshipped supernatural things, and they conducted sacrifices before idols. They used tricks and hypnosis, told fortunes by inspirations from evil spirits, and cursed people. You know, years ago, even in Korea, were also people possessed by demons. There were rumors that they healed people, but it was never so. You know, demons give us trouble, give us curse. And if people worship them well, and demons temporarily uh, make those hardships leave temporarily. But let's say you commit evil and sins, you belong to darkness, then you are the people of the enemy devil, and you are their slave. That's why they can give you trials and tribulations. And they give you tribulations, and then you go to the fortune tellers, And then the the enemy devil takes away the troubles for a moment. So people may think, uh, because I worship the the idols, those things left. They may think that way, and they may be in peace for, for a moment. And then the enemy devil brings troubles again, and this cycle repeats. So the enemy devil... gives trials and tribulations to people who belong to darkness. And through those works, they make people believe that they can do something great. They were such sorcerers and magicians uh, years ago. You know, in Korea, they were shamans possessed by demons. 
Among them were people who could dance on the sharp place. Because they were possessed by evil spirits, they could do so. They were under the influence of the evil spirits. They could do such things to some extent. And the most important thing is, they cannot mess with people of God. They cannot harm the people of God. They can only mess with people who belong to darkness. Because they belong to them. Because they are theirs. They can give them trials and trouble. And they can also make those troubles go away for a moment. After they are worshipped, after a while, they give them back. As we see people worshipping the demons, you know, only God is the true God, but they serve them. As a result, they repeatedly suffer hardships. You know, the Egyptians, magicians, did these kind of things. You know, the Egyptian magicians could imitate only the first two plagues. As Pharaoh saw his magicians turning water into blood, he hardened his heart and didn't listen to Moses. He didn't listen to Moses and refused to let him go. So the second plague was inflicted. You know, the people of Egypt and Egyptian king suffered troubles. They didn't believe in God. And they imposed harsh labor on the Israelites. And they beat them. They were such evil people because they committed evil. They brought hardships to the Israelites. Even though they they were shown amazing power, they hardened their heart and did greater evil. That's why they continually suffered trials, uh, troubles. As Moses warned, countless flocks came up from the river and swarmed the entire nation. As you hear this message, you, you You shouldn't just hear, but you have to imagine how that happened, how the plagues unfolded. You can imagine how distressing it must have been, and that makes my message more interesting. Gross-looking flocks filled the streets, and they went into the Egyptians' houses on their beds and even into their kneading bowls. Women members, you are tormented by the swarms of frogs all over the nation. Pharaoh finally called Moses and promised that if we remove the frogs, he would let the Israelites go. Moses said that the frogs would disappear from the following day, and it happened accordingly. The Bible says, But when Pharaoh saw that there was relief, he hardened his heart and did not listen to them, as the Lord had said. As soon as he was relieved of that trouble, he changed his mind and insisted on holding the Israelites. We've seen many of such cases throughout the history of m a m m i n There were people who said, Senior Pastor, if I'm healed of this, I will work faithfully for His kingdom and diligently attend church. They made such earnest confessions and got healed, but not long after that, they left. After Jesus healed the ten lepers, only one of them came back and glorified God. It's the same. They led a fervent Christian life for some time, but gradually lost their fervor and thanksgiving and say that living a Christian life is a difficult thing. thing. They were healed of deadly disease and they were saved from death. And they they could enter a better dwelling place in heaven by living a good Christian life. And and they say it is a burden to live a Christian life. You know, going to heaven is a narrow path. It's a... But if we go down that path with faith, we are filled with joyful. And it's is a blessed path. There's nothing, everything in the world is not easy. 
if we are victorious, we, you know, it's the same in our life of faith. You know, you listen to the, His message during the Sunday morning service. You know, our fathers of faith, even when they face tr- trials, they overcome them by faith. And a pearls formed in their heart and they become the fruit of the New Jerusalem. Those people, when they were filled with the Spirit, they confess, it is the greatest blessing in my life to meet the shepherd. But as they face trouble, they say, they complain, why did I meet this church? Why did I listen to the gospel of holiness? They are like Pharaoh. They change their heart. Everyone, God healed you. God allowed you to meet this church. God healed you. Uh, God healed them and allowed them to meet Him so that they would lead a good Christian life and enter heaven. God didn't heal them to see them leaving Him and walking towards hell again. Many people, but many people change their heart after they receive blessings, become the head, or find peace in their life. After their hearts change. Thus, we should quickly cast off this change of heart. God already knew Pharaoh would change his mind. Plagues continued until Pharaoh obeyed his command. As you listen to this message, you should know that your change of heart could bring down disaster. And even if in the face of trial, you cannot discern why that came, your change of heart makes your heart harden even more. You have to know that such stupidity may exist in you. When you are filled with the Spirit, you work hard for the church, but at some point, you lose your fervor and you begin to complain and you say that this is a burden. And then when you receive grace, you get filled up with the Spirit again. Such life of faith. That's why you were not able to enter Spirit. That's why you failed to receive His blessings. You have to find the reasons from yourselves. You shouldn't say like, why didn't I receive blessings even if I led a fervent Christian life? You should know that such change of heart, such stupidity, the kind that Pharaoh had, may exist in you. And those people do not find the reasons from themselves. In the face of a trial, they blame others. Uh, They should find the reason from themselves. But people with hardened heart, in the face of trials, they don't find the reasons from themselves, but they put the blame on their environment or on other people. That's why they are stubborn. As a result, they face even greater plagues. The third plague was the plague of nets. As Moses commanded Aaron to strike the dust of the earth with his staff, all the deaths turned into nets, and those countless nets were on men and beasts. People, uh, the younger people of a younger generation do not know what nets are. You know, as for me, I'm, uh, I'm 50, so I know what nets are. You know, Back in school, the teachers uh, looked at our head if there were nets on our nets uh, on our there were nets among our hair. Older generations. if they don't wash their clothes for a long time, they might find nets in the clothes. Nets are if nets are on animals or a man, they you know, dust that is lifeless and useless turned into animated nets that feed on the blood of animals, causing itchiness and inflammations. The Egyptian magicians tried to imitate them, but failed. Turning the dust of the earth into animated nets 
is the area. You know, lifeless objects turned into animated things. This is the work of creation. So it only belongs to God's power. That only belongs to God, to Creator. A work of creation which is possible only with God was beyond their ability. Even with highly advanced medicine and science, man cannot revive a dead person or create something out of nothing, which is the area that belongs to God, to Creator. Once a person... Once a person's optic nerves die and he becomes blind, his dead nerves cannot revive even with highly advanced medicine. It cannot make a person with ruptured eardrums hear well. It cannot do anything with tissues or cells that have become degenerated or the bones that have been bent for 10 or 20 years. The same goes for paralyzed body parts. Until they become stiff, we can try a massage or medication, but once they become completely stiff and degenerated, we are helpless. But God is not. So the Egyptian magicians confessed to Pharaoh that they weren't capable of doing such a work and that it was the power of God. Namely, even the magicians acknowledged God saying that it was possible only with God's power. Nevertheless, Pharaoh didn't relent. So Egypt continually suffered the plagues. Even today, such astonishing works of creation possible only with God are taking place at this church on numerous occasions. A person's leg was lengthened and degenerated bones became loose and made people walk. And the blind, the mute, and the deaf began to see, speak, and hear through prayer with the handkerchief of power. Such works, reviving what is dead, signs and wonders, only belong to God. The enemy devil cannot do, perform power in this church. s e n a pastor made it clear that if he said that if enemy devil perform power in this church and how could enemy devil do such a thing they never would do so they would never make people believe in God so it's the only the area that belongs to God and Father God works through these manifestations but how could people pass a judgment and condemn this church seeing such works This is the stupidity of the humanity. The fourth plague was the plague of flies. Swarms of dirty flies filled the palace of Pharaoh and his servants' houses as well as his people's houses. It wasn't just the one or two flies. Swarms of flies filled the houses of the Egyptians. It would be so unpleasant to see them. It would be unpleasant to see a fly conveying all kinds of germs hovering over your food. How disgusted and distressed you'd be to see numerous flies around you. Pharaoh called Moses and promised to let the Israelites go if we removed all the flies, but as the flies were gone, he again didn't keep his word. This, even after he saw God's power, and for a moment he acknowledged God, because even Pharaoh's Magicians didn't, couldn't do so. Even his magicians acknowledged that it belonged to God's power. That's why he asked God to drive away that plague. And he temporarily promised that he would let them go. He acknowledged God. He knew who he was. But even after Moses did as he asked him to do, he Pharaoh again changed his mind. So he had such craftiness. He had such stubbornness. That's why he suffered plague after plague. You know, even after people experienced the power of God, when things didn't go as expected, they began to complain. So, do you think they really have faith? Just like Pharaoh, when they were happy, they... But as they faced trouble, they changed their heart. It's the same. You have to repent of such things in our life of faith. Only then can we bring down God's answers and blessings. And Pharaoh changed his heart again with his stubborn heart. As a result, 
the plagues of pestilence and boils were inflicted and tormented livestock as well as people in all over Egypt. Even after all these plagues, Pharaoh didn't relent. As the seventh plague, hail, thunder, and lightning came down from heaven, ruining all the fields and killing animals and people that were outside. Even the crops that survived this plague of hail s all disappeared by the next plague, the plague of locusts. As these horrible plagues struck the nation one after another, Pharaoh said like, I will let them go if you stop the hail, if you remove the locusts. But once the plague stopped, he changed his mind again. Due to Pharaoh's such hardened heart, Moses stretched out his hand toward the sky. Then light disappeared from all the land of Egypt. For three days, there were no light from the sun and the moon. Due to thick darkness, they couldn't see one another. Neither could they go out of their houses. It was the plague of darkness. Nowadays, we don't have the power outage often, but many years ago, we used to have power outages often. That's why we have to prepare uh, something in our houses so that we could... uh, it was such discomfort we couldn't go to to our bathroom we just sat around the candle nowadays we don't have we hardly have power outages so we cannot imagine what it would be like if the world is dark you know the light from the moon but during that plague of darkness there was no light from the moon so such discomfort lasted for three days they couldn't do anything they must have been frightened as well such disaster came upon them brothers and sisters We are now talking about the plagues inflicted on Egypt thousands of years ago. Through this, we have to remind, we have to be reminded that the great power of the Almighty God was manifested on all over Egypt through a man of God, Moses. It was the power of God. And Father God worked through the words from the lips of his man. and it was also the power of God and it it was manifest through a man of God another thing we need to realize is that God had the ten plagues recorded in the Bible to notify us of why people face disasters and how they can escape from their afflictions these plagues represent all kinds of afflictions facing mankind today the Bible says and their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city, which mysteriously is called Sodom and Egypt, where also their Lord was crucified. As said, spiritually, Egypt signifies the world filled with sins and evil. Just as Pharaoh opposed God and suffered the plagues, people dwelling in sins and evil are tormented with various tribulations, and they are all included in the ten plagues. Let us briefly go over the spiritual meanings of the ten plagues. For more details, you can refer to the c e d a Pastor's book, the ten plagues, which dealt about the ten plagues. During the plague of blood, people suffer from the shortages of water, one of the essentials in life. So it concerns minor troubles happening in our daily, everyday life, in our families or our workplaces. They are not major ones. They refer to minor ones among family members, like breaking of peace. It's not major, tremendous breaking of peace, just minor breaking of peace. It refers, they refer to such minor ones. As for the plague of flocks, frogs, are the abominable reptile according to the Bible and they signify Satan. The plague of frog refers to a situation where your life is under Satan's work in all aspects, your family, workplace, etc. 
as Satan works and causes disorder, you find your life unbearable. The plague of gnats refer to a situation where insignificant matters like dust, things which had been lying dormant, suddenly magnifies into a big trouble, causing you a lot of agony and distress. For example, trivial things between brothers and husband and a wife can lead to a fierce fight. Up to the level of the plague of gnats, you can escape from troubles right away if you repent. But... From the plague of flies and above, you have to repent thoroughly because you have built a wall of sins on a great scale. Flies, from around, flies form around dirty places and convey diseases flying here and there. Spiritually, people convey evil words originating from their dirty hearts, and that becomes a snare to them. As a result, their children, spouses, workplaces, etc. suffer from diseases or disasters. It comes from the evil words of their lips. As their complaints pile up and they, if they, and they dishearten God and their words of judge, judgment goes beyond the, the limit, they can face such disasters. Even while they continually suffer from such plagues, if they don't turn back, they get stricken by greater ones. like the plagues of pestilence, boils, hells, locusts, etc. You know, you, you should know well what it is to repent and turn back. You listen to the... Let's say you commit a sin and repent. And, and in the Friday online service, the senior pastor said that to repent is to confess something in, things in detail. So you shouldn't be misconceived that if I write everything down in a repentance letter, I, I haven't forgiven. If you, if, you, if you write everything down and give your repentance letter to oh, some people who have good faith, Father God does not acknowledge, just because you do so, Father God does not acknowledge you as repentance. You know, just because you confess everything in detail doesn't mean Father God acknowledges you as repentance you know repentance involves you know bitter praying tearful praying sometimes you have to pray with running rows and tears and fasting such repentance should go on for days for others Just saying, I've committed a sin is not a repentance. You have to, you have to feel deep in your heart how you disregarded God, how you, what a great evil you committed, how unacceptable that is. You have to feel it strongly from your heart, and you have to feel apologetic, and you have to feel so embarrassed before Father God. You have to. have such feelings. You have to pray with such feelings. That's repentance. You don't feel, while you don't feel anything in your heart, you just say things to God, Father God, I committed this and that. Please forgive me. That's not repentance. People, you know, they write repentant letters and they write down things. But let's say you hated a brother In the Bible, the Bible says that hating a brother is a murder. You know, let's say you, you don't even want to deal with him. You hate it when he prospers and you want him to become miserable. Then, just as the Bible says, you are committing a murder spiritually and That applies to you. So, even though you didn't kill, stab a person to death, you have to think you committed murder and you have to rend your heart in repentance. And then you would ask for, you sh- then you would feel so apologetic and embarrassed before Father God. And, but while you don't have such feelings, just because you face trouble and you have a disease, you try to search 
for things to repent, but you do things just habitually. You know, in addition to that, you have to turn from your ways. You have to change the direction of your way of life. You have to stop doing what you used to do. You have to turn your steps onto the way of truth. Only then Father God will acknowledge that as repentance and all the disasters will leave you. You know, but people send send repentance letters and do nothing for repentance. And then the disasters will not leave. So you have to know that to repent is to rend your heart And in addition to that, you have to turn from your ways and you have to, let's say you used to hate a person, you should should stop hating that person. In addition to that, you have to love that person. And then Father God will make all the disasters go away and give you blessings. You know, the plagues intensify. The the plague of pestilence refers to major diseases developed inside. They refer to major diseases, not small ones. While the plague of boils signifies diseases revealed on the outside, which means the diseases have become more serious. The plague of hell refers to a situation where you suffer a huge financial loss in your business, workplace, etc. For example, if your family member gets a disease or has an accident, it may cost a lot of money. Some people who used to lead an earnest life of faith get obsessed with secular matters, not keeping their Sabbath holy. Then, they face problems at their workplaces or have an accident or disease, thereby spending a fortune. If the damage gets fatal to the point of a complete failure, that's the plague of law costs. If the situation gets worse than that, you lose hope in all areas of life and only see your future as bleak. That's the plague of darkness. If you still don't turn back, you will face the plague of death of the firstborn, which involves losses of life. As you can see, plagues intensify and get more fatal. If you have at least a bit of wisdom, even in the face of a single plague, you should humble yourself immediately and leave your way of sins. But as for Pharaoh, even as he suffered the continued plagues and his servants even told him that Egypt was destroyed, he didn't turn back. Even while seeing the entire nation in darkness, he was still stubborn. Eventually, in Egypt, all the firstborn animals, the first sons of his servants and his people, and even his first son who would succeed him, died. Only then did he entirely surrender to God. How stupid. I hope that none of you will become a stupid one like him. You shouldn't face a plague in the first place. But even if you face a minor one, you should immediately repent and act in proper ways before God. Brothers and sisters, while God's astonishing power was upon all over Egypt, How were the Israelites doing? You know, the Israelites were living in Egypt. Do you think they also suffered the plagues living there? No. When when God warned Pharaoh of the plague of flies, He said, But on the day I will set apart the land of Goshen, where my people are living, so that no swarms of flies will be there, In order that you may know that I, the Lord, am in the midst of the land, I will put a division between my people and your people. Tomorrow, this sign will occur. In this verse, my people refers to the people of God, the people of Israel who belong to God, were protected by God. But the Egyptians... suffered disasters. And Father God said that He is 
he said that he's the one who can send plagues and he's the one who can stop them. And he prophesied like that and things unfold just as he said. As God proclaimed, even wild flies swarmed all over Egypt miraculously. There were no swarms of flies in Goshen where the Israelites dwelt. Goshen didn't suffer other plagues as well. Today, God's children dwelling in His Word have always experienced the works of God who protected the land of Goshen. Our Mami members have n u m e r o u s Our Mami members have done so numerous times. Even while you dozed off at the wheel and you, your car had to be scrapped, you had no injuries at all by His protection. Even if you had a big accident, God saved your life and you immediately recovered by seeing a pastor's prayer. Many of you, uh, even if you got a disease by your negligence, once you repented and received prayer once, you were healed right away. Even during the IMF financial crisis, many of you got a promotion or a r a i s e and your business saw an increase in sales regardless of economic recessions. Even today, you confess that you are in God's protection amidst the national financial difficulties. They confess how they are being protected and they, how their ties have increased. Many people confess that. But, s i n a Pastor always exhorted us, saying, while you don't keep the Sabbath holy, don't offer the whole tithes, while you willfully commit the works of flesh, even if you say, God, I'm your child, protect me. God cannot protect you. The Bible says, even if you are the f- belong to the flock of mom, and even if you attend church, you cannot be protected. According to the Bible, see, the pastor made it clear. See, the pastor didn't teach us outside of the Bible. He didn't say that just because you are a flock of mom, you are protected. See, the pastor has never said that. Even if you love God, if you love your pastor, you will live by the word and God will protect you. He taught us according to the Bible. The Bible says, if you will give earnest heed to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in His sight, namely in God's sight, not in people's sight. You know, when you face troubles, it's good for us to comfort others and encourage others and give words of encouragement to others you have to but while someone goes down the path to untruth we cannot compliment them they are going deviating from the truth you should We shouldn't let Father God take away the power from this church. We have to, you know, even while the situation is difficult, we have to follow the truth. You shouldn't follow the truth according to man's righteousness. We shouldn't let this happen in this church. and give ear to His commandments and keep all His statutes. I will put none of the diseases on you which I have put on the Egyptians, for I, the Lord, am your healer. As said, whoever lives by His commandments can be protected from any disasters. Moreover, they can enjoy blessings. Thus, I pray that all of you stand firm in the Word of God and live according to His will so that you can live in peace and blessings regardless of any of the plagues that struck Egypt. Today's passage says, Then the Lord said to Moses, See, I make you as God to Pharaoh and your brother Aaron like God, uh, and your brother Aaron shall be your prophet, The amazing power performed by Moses and shown through the ten plagues made Moses look like God to Pharaoh and the Israelites. Through his power, the Israelites could believe Moses, whom they had never seen before, to be a man of God. Even Pharaoh, who persistently 
hardened his heart, had no choice but to let the Israelites go, obeying God's command, uh, delivered by Moses, he ended up surrendering to the man of God. Why did the Israelites follow Moses? They followed him, witnessing the evidence of God being with them. And why do you follow the shepherd? It's because you've witnessed the evidences of God being with him. Jesus said, if we call them gods to whom the word of God came and the scripture cannot be broken, do you say of him who the Father sacrificed and sent into the world, you are being, you are blaspheming because I said, I am the Son of God. And he rebuked the Jews who didn't believe despite seeing his power many times. Jesus also said, If I do not do the works of my Father, do not believe me. But if I do them, though you do not believe me, believe the works, so that you may know and understand that the Father is in me, and I in the Father. You know, Jesus said, If you cannot believe that I'm I'm the Son of the Father, just by seeing what I do, if you Do, if you see the power that I'm performing, you have to believe. So that you may know and understand that the Father is me and I am the Father. To those people who didn't refuse to believe Him with heart and heart, even those with a doubtful and hardened heart, as they believe by seeing what is done, their heart is changed. As said, good people could believe what they could believe that God sent Jesus by witnessing the authority of His words and His power. At this church, you've seen numerous works of power that cover all kinds of works recorded in the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in the Almighty God who's manifested all these works? Do you believe that all these works came from God? Do you have firm assurance in the providence that He wants to fulfill through this church? Then, you should obey His word and fulfill His providence. Most of all, just as the Israelites left Egypt, you have to quickly live from the ways of sins and evil, finish adorning yourself as a bride and come forth as spiritual warriors for the world evangelization and the grand sanctuary which God expects from us. You may think, why are we facing such trouble? Why should we face a situa- situation, unbearable situation? Actually, see, the pastor uh, is in unbearable situation, but As a flock of the shepherd, we are going through these trials of the heart and we are having some uh, afflictions. Some of you may think, why should we face such a situation? But we have to remember that you you have benefited from the... You rejoice when you uh, enjoy those benefits as a mommy member. you are in a process as you go through this process some of you may say I don't want want to go through this process then could you become the enjoy all the blessings prepared for us you know the Israelites they rejoice while seeing God's power but as cannot march on with joy they had to go through trials for 40 years at last If they didn't want to conquer the Canaan, they should have just lived as slaves in Egypt. If you believe in the promise Father God has for us, you shouldn't complain, but you have to give thanks for the promises 
We shouldn't, we shouldn't be like the people who complain against Moses and oppose God in difficulties even after witnessing His amazing power and peacefully escaping Egypt. But we should march towards Canaan to the end with faith. I ask that you only march in faith without any fleshly thoughts or disobedience so that you can make all God's promises yours. While God, whose manifested great power is with us, what should Be, what would be a problem if, we, if only we march on with faith? May each one of you make your faith even firmer, receive great authority and strength, and soon play the major roles in fulfilling, fully accomplishing Father God's providence. By doing so, I pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that we will all enter New Jerusalem prepared by our Lord. On the day, God wraps up all His providences of the human cultivation. Hallelujah! Almighty Father God of love, please lay your hands on all brothers and sisters receiving this prayer here in attendance. Lay your hands on all the members of the brain churches and local centuries, and all the GCN TV viewers, and those who are watching via satellites, cables, and the internet all over the world, transcending space and time. Plant faith in their hearts and drive out their negative thoughts and doubts. Let all the trials and afflictions leave them. By the fire of the Holy Spirit, from head to toe, scorch their sick and affected parts, including all cells, tissues, and nerves, all internal organs and intestines. Let the light of creation come upon them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, all diseases, germs and viruses, and infirmities, go away. Let the light shine on them. Scorch their incurable and long-term diseases by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Burn all kinds of endemic and contagious diseases like malaria. Be cleansed and made well. All epidemic diseases, such as colds and fever, go away from them. Protect them from any kinds of germs and viruses and bacteria. Heal them of all kinds of cancers, like stomach cancer, lung cancer, liver cancer, breast cancer, womb cancer, intestinal cancer, and all other diseases like AIDS, leukemia, cerebral apoplexy, high blood pressure, low blood pressure, heart disease, lung disease, diabetes, women's diseases, thyroid diseases, and all inflammations. Let them be made whole from polio, stroke, arthritis, herniated discs, and many others. Let all kinds of pains disappear from them, like back pain, headache, and neuralgia. Set them free from epilepsy, autism, depression, neurosis, and all other mental diseases. Loosen them from all kinds of paralysis, and let them get up, walk, and jump. Let them regain good eyesight and restore good hearing. Let the blind open their eyes and the deaf come to hear and mute begin to speak. Heal them of after effects of all kinds of accidents. Restore their ruptured and broken bones. Restore them from burns and let the heat and burning sensation go away from them. Father, let there be no scars left. Be cleansed from all kinds of drug addictions and poisoning. Father, regenerate dead nerves, tissues and cells and bring the dead back to life. Father, please bless them to conceive a baby. Bless them to conceive a baby. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, the ruler of the air, the evil forces and their servants, go away from them. Go away, you evil spirits, unclean spirits, deceiving spirits, spirits of falsehood, separating spirits and all forces of darkness. Loosen all bonds of wickedness and darkness and go away from them. Let the light shine on them. Father God, give them strength to cry out in their prayer and empower them with the power to cast off sins and become sanctified. Let them be in good health as their soul becomes prosperous and let their family be evangelized. Protect them from all kinds of accidents and disasters and bless them to lead a successful and prosperous life in everything. Please protect your children, their home, their business and their work by the fiery hedge of the Holy Spirit with the heavenly host and angels, and with your blazing eyes. Give students wisdom and understanding, and fill their hearts with more passion and desire for study. Keep their hearts and minds from worldly things, and plant into their hearts more fervent love for God. 
Bless your children and let them give glory to you in everything they do, whether they eat or drink or whatever they do. Let them confess and testify to the living God, I've met God, I've experienced God, and received His answers and blessings. Father God, thank you. Let all glory be to you alone. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.